Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about my plate chiller setup. So basically a plate chiller is just to do this for this kid. There's several ways to cool down your wart. You can use an immersion chiller, an ice bath, or a cool ship. Basically plate chillers are heat exchangers where ice cold water flows one way and your hot boiling wart flows the other and the liquids never touch. Depending on what systems and adapters that you have, there are many different ways you can hook this up. And you, some people are even using pumps to uh, pump the liquid through or, and I personally just use gravity. So the one I have is actually a 10 plate chiller. I think I bought it for around 40 bucks. You should check it out. There, there are so many different plate chillers. So Duda Diesel is a company that is involved with biodegradable and alternative fuels. They actually do have a chart where you can put in some information and find the perfect plate chiller for you that you need to use. But I, I think most of it seems industrial. I'll leave my affiliate link below so you can check it out. So I picked out a recipe that purposely uses hops for at least 30 minutes for bittering. So, so I can just mess out the plate chiller with like the hops that go through it. This is a Pilsner recipe that I got from Adventures in Homebrewing. I'm only doing half the recipe since uh, my kegs are only three gallons or two and a half gallons pretty much. I'll do another episode on this actual recipe in a, in a second. Although this thing is clean, uh, we're just going to clean and sanitize it again, okay? Alright, so let's just get this clean and sanitized. But first, a cup of tea. So basically, I just stick it into my secondary pot that I actually used during the uh, whole process. I'll stick some sanitizer in there, and the warm water, I'll stick a couple of my tubes in there with the uh, plate chiller in there so it can suck in the water. I actually have this water water pump that I bought online. It's pretty cheap, it's small though. And I'll use it to circulate the fluids through the plate chiller. I think I'm running only nine or 12 volts through this thing. You just fit your tubes over it. Find the right fitting, fit the tubes in it, use your uh, hose clamps if you need to. And also I usually try to fit the tubes in and out through every possible way, you know, just to try to clean everything out, even through the, uh, the water through ways. Alright, so I actually, uh, my faucet, I can connect directly right to the plate chiller. This is gonna be the water, cold water in. I just uh, hand tighten everything, well, except for the other adapters. Alright, this is for the cold water out. This is the wart coming out, going into the plate chiller. Remember, it's going reverse, well, all right, uh, I just gotta just picking out the uh, right tube length since I'm only using gravity to do all this. <clears throat> and wart in. Yeah, I got the uh, chair to hold my fermenter because my tubes are not that long right now. All right, there's my fermenter, two and a half gallons. And this is for the wart going out into the fermenter, which is uh, gonna be cooled down. Uh, you can see the uh, boiling temperature dropping over there, if you look at the uh, mash tun. All right, we're all connected. Looks like it was still reading 190 Fahrenheit. Alright, turning on the cold water. There it goes, gushing out. I'm 
Now when you open up the tap, I recommend opening it up maybe a quarter of the way or a third of the way. Uh, you want this thing to come out slowly because uh, if you rush this, all your hops are going to be uh, streaming through right through the tubes. So uh, yeah, just do this part slow, nice and easy. And you can see the temperature dropping. Yeah. There you go. Going right in. Coming out. Cold water is gushing out. Warps cool down. Going into the fermenter. Is that 79? Yeah. 79 Fahrenheit. And the Maish is 185. see the uh, ward coming through there. In the summer I actually collect cold water into a bucket and use it to water the garden. Was that 78? Alright, dropping. All right. Still, uh, what was that, 159 to, to down to 80. Yeah, as it flows into the fermenter, the, fem the fermenter is going to hold steady at a certain temperature. It'll, I mean, it won't drop any uh, lower, usually, as it cools down. Yeah, you can see some residue hops in there, but uh, it's going to all get cleaned out in the end anyway. There, there's the machine. <laughs> Alright, take a look inside the mash tun. Yeah, you can see, uh, it's a little greenish in there, greenish yellowish. I think I have the uh, tap open maybe almost a third of the way now just to get it, get it out of there. I think water around here is like five bucks for like 2,200 gallons uh, near Niagara Falls up here. All right, what do we got? All right, looks like 90. Yeah, like I said, as the fermenter gets filled up, it's uh, you know the temperature in there is not gonna cool down or stay cooler faster after that. Oh, there you go. There's the mess. Yeah, later I'll, I'll show you my mash tun. And the uh, strainer that's in there also. Alright, shutting, closing the uh, tap on the mash tun. Turning off the cool, cold water. Alright, pulling out my tubes. Yeah, I get I have a couple of towels ready just just in case when I pull out the tubes from the mash tun. Back into the sink. Yeah, these things are still hot. Uh, the plate chiller might be hot too. Yep, on a certain side. Alright, yeah, so at this point I just detach everything. Throw it into the sink. Well, actually, I'll, I'll reroute the tubes and uh, run the cold water. Yeah. Basically, just to start to clean up. Yeah, I forgot to record when the uh, the hops actually shoot out of there at the first split second. All right, so cleaning this thing is a bitch. Um, I'll circulate like cold and hot water through this thing first. Just a uh, regular dish detergent. You know, making sure the water gets cycled through all the parts.
Hot water, yeah. <laughs> and I'm cleaning the tubes at the same time. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you could use whatever cleaning liquid you want. Uh, some people actually use caustics. I'll probably spend like five minutes cleaning this thing. But of course, there's only one way to clean this thing. Cast it into the fire! Yeah, come on, they're all waiting for us at the Prancing Pony. Damn it, Isildur! Isildur! There's no spell in Gondor that's gonna clean that. And I'll go back to my air pump to try to like air air dry this thing. Well, yeah, it's not really an air pump, but it's a water pump. But it's still sucking in air, pushing air through. Yeah, I'm just checking to make sure the air is flowing through. Okay, back to the fermenter. Um, can we see it? All right, what is that? Um, 88, 89, 89 Fahrenheit maybe? Yeah, so uh, you're actually, you still gotta wait a few hours until it drops to pitching temperatures. I think I'm actually gonna buy a wart chiller after this just to see, you know, see the difference. Okay, here's, uh, here's another way I dry this thing. Turn up the heat on the oven, just toss it in there. Um, you can actually get the uh, water to evaporate out of there. Yeah, just leave it in there and forget it. I think I had it at 150 Fahrenheit, just uh, on the low side. And back to the oven. Alright, this thing's gonna be uh, really hot, so here goes. Yeah, so uh, just keep it at a diagonal to uh, let it drip out a little more. Um, you'll see that it's not completely dry yet. I mean, I could, I could probably toss it back in the oven again. Yeah, as you can see, I've had this for a couple of years. The uh, thicker text is already fading. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, okay. It's cool down. Yeah, just invert it a couple of times. Yeah, that's why uh, every time I use it again, I always clean and sanitize it. Okay, there we go. Fermenter at 80. Alright, so that was my plate chiller. I actually do want to get uh, one of the immersion chillers. I want to try that out just to see the difference. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and make sure if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell notification. Alright, see ya kids.